Hello friends, we have already discussed bacterial cell wall structure in previous videos. We also discuss about the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Then we compared gram positive and gram negative bacteria and also discuss about the gram staining. You can refer my videos, the link is given in the description box. In this video, we are going to discuss about biosynthesis of peptidoglycan. It is the syllabus of CSIR net exam. As discussed earlier, bacterial cell wall, it is the part of cell envelope. Cell envelope has three parts, glycocalyx, then cell wall, then cell membrane or plasma membrane. So cell wall is part of this cell envelope. But the structure of the cell wall is not advanced as in eukaryotes like cell wall of plants and fungi. But the structure of the cell wall is primitive in bacteria. This is because bacteria is primitive on earth. It dates back to 3.5 billion years. So it is 3.5 billion years old or it is present on earth from 3.5 billion years. Bacterial cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan which is also known as murine. This peptidoglycan is unique as only present in prokaryotes. So only in prokaryotes that is in the bacteria the cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan. So it is unique because it is present in prokaryotes. Though thickness of peptidoglycan layer is different among gram positive and gram negative bacteria. The peptidoglycan layer is thick in gram positive bacteria and thin in gram negative bacteria. But basic structure or chemical composition is same. So let us discuss chemical composition of peptidoglycan. Peptidoglycan is polymer of NAG and NAM which are sugar derivatives. Full form of NAG is N-acetylglucosamine and full form of NAM is N-acetylmuramic acid. So the glycan backbone consists of alternate NAG and NAM unit. Both are linked by the beta 14 glycosidic bond. To the carboxyl group of NAM, pentapeptide is attached. But later on, terminal D-alanine is lost during cross-linking of glycan backbone. Hence, at last, tetrapeptide is attached. Four amino acids of the tetrapeptide are L-alanine, D-glutamine, L-lysine and D-alanine. So this is the structure of NAM and NAG unit. These are linked by the beta 14 glycosidic bond. And in the glycan backbone, alternate NAM and NAG unit are present linked by beta 14 glycosidic bond. To the carboxylic group of NAM, pentapeptide is attached. Amino acids that are present are L-alanine, D-glutamine, L-lysine or diaminopimelic acid, D-alanine and D-alanine. During the cross-linking, what happens? This bond breaks and this last D-alanine is lost. So now, to the NAM, tetrapeptide is attached which consists of four amino acids. Penultimate D-alanine is directly cross-linked to amino acid of tetrapeptide of adjacent glycan backbone or in some cases a short peptide chain that is known as peptide interbridge cross-links the tetrapeptide chain. So the adjacent glycan backbones are cross-linked. How this cross-linking occurs? Here, because the last D-alanine is lost, the second last D-alanine of this glycan backbone is connected to the amino acid of this tetrapeptide of the adjacent glycan backbone. Here it is diaminopimelic acid. And these are directly cross-linked. So this type of the cross-linking is known as direct cross-linking. In some cases, this last D-alanine of tetrapeptide of this glycan backbone is connected or linked to the amino acid of this tetrapeptide of the adjacent glycan backbone 
in this case l lysine by the peptide interbridge and the amino acid present in this peptide interbridge is pentaglycine that is 5 glycine amino acid is present but the amino acid present in the peptide interbridge vary in different species of bacteria it is not same in all the species of bacteria this type of the cross linking is not direct so at the end this is the structure of the peptidoglycan it is a mesh like structure these are the glycan backbone and the glycan backbone consists of alternating nam and nag unit represented by the pink and green beads these nam and nag units are linked by the beta 1 4 glycosidic bond these are the peptide side chain attached to the carboxylic group of the nam and the peptide side chain of the adjacent glycan backbone are cross link known as tetrapeptide cross linking this cross linking is either direct or by the peptide interbridge which results in the peptidoglycan polymer which is mesh like structure now let us see stages of peptidoglycan biosynthesis for the convenience peptidoglycan biosynthesis is divided into four stages first is stage one site of occurrence is cytoplasm so stage one occurs in the cytoplasm of bacterial cell in this stage nucleotide sugar linked precursors udp nam and udp nag is synthesized glucose through several step that is by the multi-step reactions is converted into n-acetyl glucosamine then to this n-acetyl glucosamine utp binds utp it is the source of energy one inorganic phosphate is used hence we get udp nag then some udp nag is converted into udp nam so in this stage we get two sugar link precursors of peptidoglycan udp nag and udp nam then second stage so the site of occurrence of stage 2 is cytoplasm in this process sequential addition of five amino acids takes place to the udp nam so five amino acids are sequentially added to the udp nam as a result udp nam pentapeptide is formed so these five amino acids are sequentially added to the udp nam and then it gives udp nam pentapeptide this pentapeptide consists of l alanine d glutamine l lysine d alanine d alanine amino acids then third stage of the peptidoglycan biosynthesis takes place in the cytoplasmic membrane in step 1 udp nam pentapeptide binds with bactoprenol this bactoprenol is present in the cytoplasmic membrane and this forms lipid 1 in step 2 nag from udp nag is added to this lipid 1 this is lipid 2 so this third stage of peptidoglycan biosynthesis takes place on plasma membrane or cytoplasmic membrane as bactoprenol is present on cytoplasmic membrane udp nam pentapeptide present in the cytoplasm binds with the bactoprenol and form lipid 1 this phosphate comes from udp then in the second step nag from the udp nag binds with lipid 1 and ills lipid 2 so this is lipid 2 then lipid 2 is transported across the membrane by flippase then this lipid 2 is flipped out or transported across the plasma membrane by the enzyme flippase then this is added to growing glycan chain by the enzyme peptidoglycan glycosyl transferase nag and nam pentapeptide is attached and bactoprenol pp is left then what happens in this lipid 2 nam pentapeptide and nag is added to the growing glycan chain catalyzed by the enzyme glycosyl transferase 
and in this process back to prenol pp is left behind or it is displaced it is not added to the growing glycan chain then back to prenol is recycled back to its original state by enzyme phosphatase so this back to prenol is recycled back to its original state or original form by the enzyme phosphatase which removes this phosphate group this is important because bacteria has limited supply of bactoprenol and if it is not restored in its original form then the supply of bactoprenol gets exhausted which affects the peptidoglycan biosynthesis fourth stage or final stage of peptidoglycan biosynthesis it occurs outside the cytoplasmic membrane it is cross linking of polymer adjacent glycan backbone are cross linked through their peptide side chain and this cross linking reaction is called as transpeptidation this is catalyzed by enzyme transpeptidase terminal d alanine is cleaved from pentapeptide side chain cross linking is either direct or by peptide interbridge so cross linking occurs between the adjacent glycan backbone these are the adjacent glycan backbone and these are cross linked by their peptide side chain so how this cross linking occurs this last d alanine of the pentapeptide is cleaved and this provides the energy for the transpeptidation reaction this transpeptidation or cross linking occurs between the second last d alanine of the tetrapeptide side chain of one glycan backbone and one of the amino acid of tetrapeptide of adjacent glycan backbone this cross linking is either direct known as direct cross linking or the cross linking occurs through peptide interbridge which involves the polymer of amino acid cross link the two peptide side chain in this case this peptide interbridge is pentaglycine but the type of amino acid in the peptide interbridge varies in different species of bacteria this is all for today's video if you like this video please hit the like button share it and subscribe my channel thank you